leave on the road? Do you, do you leave this cliche, sex, drugs and rock and roll? Um, <laughs> well, there's, <laughs> there's two of them. There's two of them that are involved, and it's mostly rock and roll and drugs, not much sex, you know, because Fear Factory shows don't usually have chicks there. <laughs> it's more like the Fear Factory male review. But it's, uh, you know, I live my life to the fullest every day, and uh, I enjoy it. And uh, on the road, I try and make the best of it. And I don't really do much drugs. I like, you know, smoke a little marijuana once in a while, and I drink alcohol. But uh, you know, other than that, you know, I'm getting older, I gotta take care of myself, and you know, I'm not as young as I used to be, and it's hard to do some of those things, but you know, I got a girlfriend, so I gotta be careful. <laughs> What's more important to you, playing in small clubs where you, there are only diehard fans or all time fans of Fee Factor, or doing some festivals where you can get, get, can get more new fans and the reaction is not as good as like a small club? That's a good question, because um, I mean, they're both good. But I do prefer club shows, you know, because it's more intimate. Um, it sounds better. Festival shows always sound terrible. And, uh, you know, something always goes wrong. The fun part about festivals is you get to meet all other bands and hang out with the different musicians backstage and, you know, drink beer. <laughs> and, uh, but the, the club shows are more intimate. You can do more with your show. You're not really restricted on time. Uh, you got a good lights. You got a good sound. You can actually see the people and everybody there is to see you. So, to me, I prefer the club gigs. The record industry must adapt to the world that's evolving through the internet. Um, there is so much to be learned from what's going on with the downloading. If they only saw it, it's almost so obvious. They think raising the prices is going to help, you know, curb their losses, but that's you know, it's only going to make things worse. You know, downloading is something that you can't stop. You know, it's the evolution of tape trading, except it's the volume is so much more, it's an excess because the internet is so, so available to a lot of people, not everybody, but to a lot of people. Um, you can't stop downloading, but you can, you know, kind of get ahead of it by offering a great looking CD, uh, offering more in the CD, great artwork, great packaging. You know, a lot of fans, I... Honestly, I've downloaded songs before, not a whole album because I, I just don't have that time, but a couple songs just to check out a band that I've never heard. And because I've checked out the songs and downloaded them, I do go out buying records. So in some ways it works in your favor. If you have a bad record and they hear it online first, they're not going to go buy it. <laughs> but if you have a, a decent record, they will probably go out and buy it. Offer more, you know, and you make sure that your records are sold, you know, inexpensively. So that you get your money's worth, and that's how you gain fans is by becoming like fan friendly. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not fan friendly to sell a record for twenty dollars. I won't buy a record for twenty bucks. I'm like, fuck that. So I go and find another record that's cheaper. I was like, well, I've never heard of this band, and it looks interesting. The record looks pretty good. Packaging looks pretty cool. I'm gonna check this out. It's only ten bucks, and then for for twenty bucks, I can get two records versus one. Do you listen sometimes to underground bands or to some newcomer bands? I do. Um, I do, yeah. I go to shows a lot in Brooklyn and, uh, you know, there's a band like JJ Paradise Players, like I mentioned, uh, Unsane. Uh, there's a, a local band called The Brought Low, that's pretty good. A band called RPG, that's really good. Uh, you know, there's a new band, Poison the Well, I like, you know. So, uh, you know, I listen to a lot of music and uh, I'm exposed to a lot, so. Yeah, I'm definitely an avid listener of music. If you hadn't to deal with Roadrunner, would you do a normal job? Or? Well, um, I'd do whatever I could to survive, really. I uh, Just last year, you know, when Fear Factory was just you know, work getting through, we were trying to get through some things, I was in L.A. and I was a, I was a house painter. I was painting houses. <laughs> So you didn't get so much money to live from P Factor. It's not a really bad contract, yeah. um, but you know I I do I'm very adaptable, and I can do I will do whatever it takes to survive, and I don't care what it is. You know if if I can survive on my music, I'd rather do that. But if I can't, I will go out and work. I'm not above working. <laughs> you know working is good for me. You know it makes me feel better, and painting houses was fun. You know. How do you do you practice your voice to be everyday top fit on stage? Um, well, we're, 
<laughs> you know, there's no tricks. This, my, this is something I just did. You know, this is something that came natural to me. So I, I practice not using my throat. I practice, you know, pr using my diaphragm from down here. Uh, I stay healthy, and uh, it's all about lung power. So, and you have to concentrate and be careful and uh, not blow yourself out. You know, and there's a right way to scream, a wrong way to scream, or be aggressive. And I, I hope I've learned the right way because obviously I'm still singing and doing this. So you just have to be smart. And if you push too hard and it hurts, then you're doing something wrong. <laughs> and the, the changeover from aggressive to melodic is, I don't even know how I do that. <laughs> it's just something I did. What about the Fee Factory logo? You have. Every time a new logo, where do you get the ideas? Because I'm crazy and I just draw shit and I'm just like, I have this mind. I went to art school for a couple of years and so I'm a designer in some respects. So I just draw and I just come up with these crazy logos. I just thought of one the other night. I'm gonna make a new one. First one wasn't from you. I found that. I, I found it and I kind of developed it a bit further, but uh, I found that through a book of old... Uh, logos from like the 1800s in England. So I stole it. <laughs> What's your favorite Fee Factory logo? I like the first one. The first one's really good. It's just so definite. And uh, you know the the other ones, there were there was a couple other ones. I like the ones I designed personally. I designed this is the fourth one I designed. The first one and then there was one on the uh, we did a t-shirt called uh, Securetron 2000 that had this logo triangle that I designed and then there was the uh, this other one I designed it was very sharp it was on a red t-shirt yeah. it was behind it it had a very sharp I designed that one that one's cool because all the, all the other it was very mathematical so all the other lines every other line is parallel so it's kind of it's almost like a uh, uh, optical illusion and uh, I designed a new one And those are my favorites. <laughs> the ones that Dave, Dave McKeon designed, well, it's all right. I knew I could do better. And the, the last one from Digimon, Arnold, eh, it's all right. But I like mine are better. <laughs> Were you involved in the artwork, too? In, in a lot of ways, yeah. Um, I, when, we, when it came to the point of finding artwork or getting artwork done for this record, I, uh, I went online and I was just looking up artists and I was just kind of surfing the web, as they say, and uh, came across this artist named Torsten Gerhardt from Berlin. And the first piece I saw just blew me away. I was like, oh, God, we got to contact this guy. So uh, Christian and Torsten started communicating, and I sent Torsten the, the logo that I designed and sent it to him, and he was inspired, and he just kind of worked his design, his ideas into it. And Christian and Torsten talked about all sorts of stuff, and, and the packaging is going to be sick. It's going to look so badass. What do you think about the governor of California? <laughs> Calif <laughs> California Uber Alice. Um, you know, it's just do you agree with the governor? <laughs> the gubernator? I didn't. I didn't vote. I did not vote. I, I moved out of California, so I didn't vote. So, uh, but a lot of people did not vote, and actually, most of the people that voted were in Los Angeles, and. Uh, You know, it's just, he's a businessman, and that's a, that's what it comes down to. And, and California wanted a businessman for governor, so whatever he does, I hope he, I hope he fixes the economy because the California economy is really bad. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, you know what? It, it's, it's the second actor California's <laughs> California's voted in as governor, and thank goodness, it's. Thank goodness the Constitution states that you have to be a natural-born citizen to run for president. Hello, Austria. I'm Burton from Fear Factory. You are watching Earshot Webzine, and I hope I see you all in Austria very, very soon.